Okay, I am back for part two of the horseshoe. And I want to show you with these pink individual molds how you want to know if it's ready to place an embed. So the way I do it is I just kind of give it a little wiggle. Let's see if I can show that. And when you wiggle it very gently, it shouldn't disturb it too much and it shouldn't be like liquid sloshing back and forth. You can also gently tap your finger on the side and feel if it's really liquidy or not. But once it doesn't jiggle when you shake it too hard and it stays kind of in place in the little rectangle, then it is ready. And that was why it was important to pour the batter when it's at a very light trace so that it's nice and smooth on top. Because I've had that trouble before where if the trace is very thick, it's going to look lumpy on top. Okay. So I kind of just try to place them in the middle best I can. And just very gently press down. Now you saw me take my glove off, but that's because I'm pretty experienced with soap at this point, and I'm not going to touch the batter in any way. I can put my gloves back on in a second here, but sometimes when you're doing something tedious, it's very hard to do that with the gloves on. <laughs> but you can see the point. You wanna try to center it as best you can in the middle and just kind of drop them and gently press down just a, just a little tap to make sure it's all made contact with the liquid soap. I'll try to do my clothes on again. last one. Now you see that I did get that one a little bit messed up, but that's okay because you can fix it. That's the beauty of soap is it's very sculptable, especially when you make a mistake. And batches are never a failure because you can always save them, grind them up for confetti soap, make dough out of them, the soap dough. There's so many ways that you can save something that you feel that you've messed up on. It's a very wonderful medium in that way that you can constantly reuse it for a different way. You can even rebatch soap, which I've never actually tried to do, but I've seen wonderful results from it. So I'm just gonna get a popsicle stick real quick to fix that. There you go. So now we do a spritz of rubbing alcohol. Just to prevent soda ash. Which with natural colored soaps, for some reason, soda ash really happens a lot. And certain colorants more than others. Activated charcoal can really ash up on you depending on what essential oils you use. 
so it's always good to give it a spritz. I'm not a big fan of rubbing alcohol either, but you also don't want to have ash all over your pretty soaps. So there we go. There is the horseshoe. Shop links will be listed below. Uh, this horseshoe will probably be ready for the, let's see, it would be, I think, the August solstice up, update, which would be around August 1st. Thank you so much for watching. Please try to make natural soaps yourself if you're interested. There's many good resources here on YouTube, and I will be making more videos in the future uh, to show how I work with the colorants and all the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years of working with them. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.